Hello and welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more epic rap battles of history. Today we have J.R.R. Tolkien versus George R.R. Mount. Versus George R.R. Mount. <laughs> George R.R. Martin. I don't know why that was so hard. Both genius authors of their own respective times. J.R.R. Tolkien, of course, doing the Lord of the Rings and the related IPs. Wonderful. Read the books. I think I've read every book he's written, pretty much. I've seen all the movies. Wonderful. Awesome. One thing I really love about J.R.R. Tolkien is the depth that he created his fantasy worlds in. He developed actual languages and lores and histories, and it's super, super detailed and in-depth. George R.R. R. Martin, of course, did Game of Thrones. Wonderful. Amazing. I heard that it didn't end that well, but I never actually watched the ending. <laughs> so, anyway, I did watch some of them. I never read the books, though, so I do have a bit of an unfair advantage when it comes to J.R.R. Tolkien. Anyway, let's see what's up. Nice beats. That was really good, actually. <laughs> okay, let's break that down in a bit more detail. This beat is amazing. Gather up your trolls and your soldier elves. Gather up your trolls and your soldier elves. And your orcs and your wargs and your stings and dwarves and clam drains. Cause there's a new literary lord in the ring. Oh, that's a really good line. A new literal literary lord in the ring paraphrasing Lord of the Rings. So he's referencing the Ents, which are, of course, the tree beings in Lord of the Rings. He's bringing up the wargs, the dog-like creatures, the... what else did he say here? Your, your wargs and your stings. Sting is, of course, the name of Frodo's sword that used to be Bilbo's sword that glows blue when it's in the presence of orcs. Love it. Glamdring. Um, oh boy. Is Glamdring the name of Gandalf's sword off the top of my head? Oh god, if I get that wrong. But it's the name of the swords. A lot of the swords, of course, have their own names and their own histories. And really cool. I love that because that is one of the things that George R.R. R. Martin is known for, right? He builds up these characters, he gets you super attached to them, and he's not scared to kill them off. He kills off a lot of characters. And some people don't like that, some people find it upsetting, and other people love it because a lot of times in these fantasy novels, you know that a lot of the characters that you're fond of aren't going to die. And you don't know that with George R. R. Martin. So there's there's an element of unpredictableness to it that kind of just adds to like the believable factor, if you will. <laughs> so yeah, you see it in contrast, like, yeah, we know if your guys are good guys, they're gonna survive. So there's no threat there. They're gonna make it through it. We're all seeing how to find some sex in your movie, yeah. George R. R. Martin, of course, his novels and the show is a little more adult themed than Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings was more family. I don't want to say family oriented, but more of like a PG setting, whereas Game of Thrones has some scenes in there that would not be considered PG. He does like his boobies, so to say. Uh, it's the Goonie and cast a couple boobies. And of course, he's got that super creepy noise that he makes there. It's like, ah, <laughs> get some boobies. Ah. I can't even mimic it. Ditch the Goonies. So wasn't the character or the actor that played Samwise Gamgee, wasn't he in the Goonies? I can't remember his name at the moment. 
But I'm pretty sure he was in the Goonies. Don't know that reference. Dragons, dwarves, horses, fortresses, magic, and so you have beat my whole shit. You <laughs> uninspired. You want to watch George? Welcome to Shire Rack. In book sales, you got nothing to say. I'm number one and two. You're under 50 shades of gray. I got the balls. Oh. It's a ball. You're a pirate. You even stole my arm. Oh. We all know the world is full of chance and anarchy. So yes, it's true to life for characters to die randomly. A newsflash. The genre's called fantasy. It's meant to be unrealistic. You might have been mad at <laughs> wow he's not holding back the punches let's go back through that in a little more detail So yeah, he's like, yeah, let me go down the list of the things that our books have in common. By the way, mine came out long before yours, so it looks like you just kind of copied me and added some boobs. <laughs> Shit, you uninspired hack. You want to war, George? Welcome to Shire Rock. Oh, play on Iraq. God. In book sales, you got nothing to say. I'm number one and two. You're under 50 shades of crack. Wow, J.R.R. Tolkien is a very renowned artist. He has sold many millions of books. Just fact. His children's children's children are fine financially because of everything that they've done with the books and the movies and the franchise fees and the toys and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Collectibles. I... They, they're rolling in dough. And then, of course, now I almost wonder about that because we have some of the new things that are coming out, like on Amazon. What's that called? The, the Rings of Power or something? I haven't watched that, but it almost seems like maybe the money's drying up and the family needs some more or something because they used to be very strict about who they let use that intellectual property. And they seem to be easing up on that a bit more. So I'm not sure if there's maybe more underlying there than we know about, but it's quite interesting either way. Got the pros of a pro. Your shit's a ball. You're a pirate. You even stole my R -O. Yeah, J.R.R. Tolkien, George R.R. Martin. I don't know if the R's are legitimate or added in there, but it's true. We all know the world is full of chance and anarchy. So yes, it's true to life for characters to die randomly. But yeah. The genre's called fantasy. It's meant to be <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's got a very good point there. The genre is called fantasy, so it is meant to be unrealistic. So, which is more believable, a dragon or that the main character survived? Okay, so thinking through this first back and forth, I would have to say, and once again, I'm a little biased here because I'm much more familiar with J.R.R. Tolkien. Than I am George R. R. Martin. But that being said, I think that it went to J.R.R. Tolkien. He just he addressed some of the things that George brought up. He had comebacks to them. He threw his own jabs in there. He won, for sure, this first batch. Let's see if George has what it takes to come back. I conscientiously object to what you're doing on these beasts. I'll cut you like my teeth on Beauty and the Beast. You went too deep, Professor Tweed Pan. We don't need the backstory on every fucking tree branch. <laughs> I cut my teeth in the trenches of the song. Oh, wait. You locked your Santa Claus ass through Vietnam. Man, it's what? hard for me to take criticism on clothes. From a dude who says a raven to say hi to his toes. You fat jokes. Okay, so that was kind of a quick back and forth. So we're going to do that as a whole. Um... A fantasy is meant to be unrealistic, you hmm. myopic vanity! I conscientiously object to what you're doing on these beasts! I'll cut you like my teeth on Beauty and the Beast! You ain't I have a feeling, now, I might be misremembering this, but wasn't George R.R. R. Martin a critic? Like an online critic? Or something like that? I, I Maybe Beauty and the Beast is related to that. Maybe he did a an article on it or something like that. I don't really remember, to be honest, but I feel like I know of something there. Let me know in the comments, because clearly I'm missing a little bit there. Too deep, 
Professor Tweed Pan. We don't need the backstory on every fucking tree branch. <laughs> He's got a good point, too. One of my favorite things about the J.R.R. Tolkien novels and literature is the depth of the history. But he also has books and, and notes and everything that go way, way farther than they need to. And George's point here is, you know, you don't need that. We don't need to explain where the sword came from and its previous three owners and how it was made 600 years ago, um, just so that way you can use it to slice this orc up. It's not relevant. It's cool, but we don't need that. Cut my teeth in the trenches of the shark. You lopped your Santa Claus ass through Vietnam. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah, George R. R. Martin, I did know was a LARPer. I've heard that before. J.R.R. Token, of course, was in war, and he actually wrote a lot of the notes that eventually became Lord of the Rings while in the trenches. So quite interesting there. And it's hard for me to take criticism on clothes from a dude who says a raven to say hi to his toes. You fat Oh, fat jokes. As a heavier dude myself, I'm allowed to laugh at them. <laughs> I feel no guilt. Oh, you're a nerdy little nebbish and I may be dirty, but you got a hairy foot fetish dog. Characters suck. Got buffers and boofers and brand new bucks. I got a second breakfast for all them goofy fucks. Lift up my gut and tea bag and smile. <laughs> that was a bar that was a really good one lift up my gut and tea bagans my nuts <laughs> oh this is gonna be a lot harder to call now just because of that line alone <laughs> and lead up to it that was amazing Oh, okay. You fat jokes are worse than your pipe smoke. My show's the hottest thing on HBO. HBO dope ass programming. <laughs> I like that. I like that. It was. It it was a very popular show. It was a very, very popular show. I'm not sure how the books did, but the show was certainly very popular. I'm rock and roll, you're a nerdy little nebbish, and I may be dirty, but you got a hair. Of course, because the hobbits have hairy feet. Even the names of your characters suck. You got buffers and boofers and brandy bucks. The brandy bucks. breakfast for all them goofy fucks. Lift up my gut and teabag and smile. I can't. <laughs> the fact that I'm laughing this hard, hearing it again, <laughs> says a lot about how great it is. Whoa, oh, that... Oh, man, that was a really good line. Okay, let's move on. Yes, Lewis and I were just discussing how you and Jon Snow both know nothing. Because the backstory on my box office is brilliant. Got my children making millions off my silver huh? brilliance. And I'm more rock and roll than you ever been. Don't believe me? Ask that Japanese. <laughs> oh, this was amazing. J.R.R. <laughs> Tolkien notoriously was friends with T.S. Lewis, who wrote, I believe, the Narnia series. How you and Jon Snow both know nothing. Because the backstory on my box office is brilliant. Got my children making millions off my silver brilliant. I like that rhyme structure there. That's a really clever rhyme structure. And the billions from the Silmarillions, of course, the prequel to Lord of the Rings was the Silmar Silmarillion. Or was that the prequel to The Hobbit? I don't remember what order they go in, but one of the earlier books in the timeline was the Silmarillion. Don't believe me, ask Led Zeppelin. There was a song that Led Zeppelin had, I don't recall the name of it, 
but I do remember the verse where it says, in the darkest depths of Mordor, there was a etc etc they reference mordor and they reference Gollum, the evil Gollum. so i don't know if there's more depth to that or more there but i do know that they had a song that had lyrics based on this that referenced lord of the rings characters i'm too towering ah the two towers (laughs) that's the book the two towers and the movie the two towers that is very clever wordplay. Uh, same thing there. Every time I battle, it's the return of the king. Return of the king, the conclusion to the Lord of the Rings 3 trilogy. It was amazing. <laughs> wow, this was such an amazing battle. I, I wish I knew a little bit more about George R.R. R. Martin, because I feel like there's probably a few things in there that I missed. Now, who won? That's the question that we have to answer here. Before I say what I think, I want you to comment down below who you think won. And if you agree or disagree with me, tell me why, because I would love to hear why. And what I've noticed on these is sometimes one listen might be different than another listen. So if I come back and listen to this a few days later, my opinion might be slightly different because I might pick up on a few things that I missed the first time around. But that being said, by a very slim margin. I mean, we're talking very slim. I think J.R.R. Tolkien won by a very slim margin. George had that killer line of T. Baggins. Of course, Bilbo Baggins. It's a wordplay. T. Baggins, my nuts. <laughs> I just... That one line alone almost made him win. That, that was such a great one. But J.R.R. Tolkien had just bam, 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 one after another. So I think in all fairness, I have to say the quantity of his quality hits has to count for something over the one super amazing banger. There was just too many of them. So slim margin, J.R.R. Tolkien wins, I think, in my book. Although I have to say George R.R. Martin did a commendable job and came in a very close second. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.